As the movie starts, we see an old man sleeping in a remote cabin in the woods. He wakes up all of a sudden, as if from a bad dream, and looks for his dog, Rascal. He starts to walk inside the cabin, calling his name, but no return. He was instantly terrified and pissed off, convincing himself that Rascal, his dog, is gone again. He keeps fussing around the cabin, muttering to himself that he's going to kill him and sticks his head on the wall as soon as he lays his hands on it. While making this conversation with himself, someone knocked at his door. He grabs his shotgun and approaches the door. He opened the door and pointed the gun at the young man standing at the door, carrying a backpack. The young man was frightened to see that. The old man grabbed his jacket and pulls him inside and closed the door. He is very confused to see a young man at his door, so he feels a bit threatened too. He asks the young man some questions such as his name, whether the old man's wife had sent him to keep an eye on him, or if he was a serial killer. We find out that the boy's name is Joe and that he has gotten lost in the woods. He had come in front of the cabin after following the smoke coming out of the chimney. He just wants to know which way to go so that he can get back home on his own. Joe tries his best to calm the old man by assuring him that he is lost and has no other motive. But the old man doesn't seem to believe him. Instead, wants him to stay and answer all of his questions. So he invites him to sit. Joe sat at the corner of the couch, looking nervous. Looking that, the old man tells Joe to feel comfortable while sitting. Joe starts appreciating his wooden cabin, how it's built, and how he used animal hide to embellish it. Suddenly, the old man interrupted him, and told him that they're not friends yet, and told him that he got some questions. The old man set up some rules for Joe to sit where he is seated, and only respond to him when he asks a question. He starts his questions like how he got lost, if anyone knows he's here, what he was doing out here all by himself, and so on. Joe answered him that it is a long story, and if he tells him, he was sure that he is not going to believe him. After a moment of silence, the old man told him that it's nice when people get lost and find their way. His speech was heavy with sarcasm. He seems he ain't too convinced by what he is saying. So he goes further to ask, how do I know you're not some kind of psycho killer? How do I know you're not some maniac madman on the loose? Joe is flustered, but manages to keep up with his questions. Joe swears that he is not going to kill him. The reason he gives is, it's against the law. The old man continues. He asks him whether he's a salesman. Joe replied, no. Then the old man moves to search his bag. He finds trail mix and a knife. Joe assures that he was carrying it for his protection before coming to the woods. And he also tells him that he used to come to the woods when he was a child to visit his grandfather. And he relays how his grandfather told him that he couldn't be too careful in these woods. He also mentioned to him that he should be ready for anything, as the woods can be beautiful as well as dangerous. The old man took the knife for the time being. As the old man stands to put the knife somewhere in the house, Joe stands up and runs to the door. But the old man shoots, putting a hole in the floor where Joe was running. Joe confesses that he might be better off on his way and wants to leave. Then the old man went easy on him and got him back, and told him to stay for the night. The old man agrees that they will not hurt each other, offering a handshake as a deal. After making peace, the old man starts to make coffee for both. For the first time, they sat down and started a smooth conversation. Joe started the conversation by asking him if he doesn't like salesmen. The old man tells him that he distrusts them because they don't really care what they are selling to people. They only care about making their monthly. The old man reveals that he had unfortunate experience of being sales when he was younger. At first, he didn't care what he was selling. He only saw what he was getting in exchange. After a quit period of time, he quit the job because he was tired of deceiving people and himself. For him, it was a burden, a walking nightmare going door to door, selling things just to satisfy his wife with a new appliance. So now he mentioned his wife. Joe asked if he is still married. The old man becomes upset when Joe asked. So as if to distract the question, he starts to tell what is supposed to be a funny story. The story is about a Bible salesman who showed up at his door to sell the good book. Just like Joe, the old man invited him to the cabin and treated him with coffee and carrot cake. The Bible salesman seems a strong believer as expressed by the old man. 
but couldn't tell whether he is a true believer or not. So the old man asked him a few questions in order to figure that out. He asked him whether God loves him, and why God wanted him to sell Bibles instead of living in a mansion with a million dollars. When the salesman tells him that God has a plan and he is exactly where he wants him to be, the old man ominously asks the salesman whether he would still believe in his God if the old man turned out to be a dangerous person. The Bible salesman got scared. Joe was also frightened as he was listening to the story. Joe asks the old man whether he hurt the salesman. The old man speaks of drugging the Bible seller by putting a little something in his coffee. The sedative made him sleepy and drifts him off. The old man then tied him to the front of a burning stove, took his necktie and tied that around his eyes like a blindfold. Then the Bible salesman starts to hallucinate and start praying louder and louder. Then Joe asks what he did to him. The old man tells him that he sent him away by pointing him in the right direction. Joe was startled by what he was hearing. The old man takes out two bottles and offers Joe a drink, but Joe didn't want to drink as he fears that he will drug him too. But the old man assures that he won't hurt him as he wouldn't go back on his word. Now Joe accepts the drink. They made a toast and started to talk. When the old man asks Joe about his life, he discloses that he is from New Albany, southern Indiana. He moved to Tennessee when he was eight years old and lived there ever since. Joe got married to Jeannie, a second grade school teacher, and shifted to Knoxville a few years back when he got a job. Joe opens up about his anguish over the feeling that sometimes life is conspiring against him. He also adds that his relationship was also struggling as his wife is distant these days. Joe is also embarrassed because they have been having a hard time trying to have a baby and his wife is convinced that Joe is infertile. The old man could relate to Joe's problems and felt sympathetic towards him. He told him to be proud of himself as he is a hard-working man trying to make ends meet. The old man asks Joe to retrace the steps to comprehend why he came into the woods. He came to the woods because he wanted to take a hike along the river. It has always been his favorite place and helps him to get his mind right. While walking across the wood, he heard something, a moan. When he started walking deeper and deeper into the woods, the moan got louder. So he ran until everything went black. He lost consciousness and when he awoke, he saw smoke coming from the chimney. The old man in turn tells Joe about the Purple Lake. The Purple Lake is a hidden deep lake that had special healing power and how the animals kept the location a secret because they could get healed from any injury by drinking water from the lake. One time, the old man tried to find the lake to hear his inner damage, but couldn't find it. At night, when the old man is getting ready to cook food for both of them, Joe suddenly runs away. Rascal comes in not long after that. We find out that Rascal was not a dog, but a person whom the old man is very scared of. Rascal has come back from hunting with food for both of them. When the old man asks Rascal about Joe, Rascal tells him that nobody else is in the cabin except for them. The old man asks Rascal to remind him about what happened, and Rascal gives him water from the Purple Lake to drink and commands him to get into the wooden box in front of them. When he opens the box again, he finds himself in a home, and the old man finds out that Joe is just a younger version of himself. He saw his wife, Jeannie, getting intimate with another person, Bible salesman, which made him so angry that he couldn't control himself. He killed them both, and his wife's ghost still comes to haunt him in his dreams. The old man is sleepless because all he can think about are the ghosts of his past. At the end of the movie, we see the old man lying on his bed and suddenly wake up as if from a bad dream to relive his past once again by hallucinating his younger self and to beg mercy from his wife. Once again, he was looking for his dog, Rascal, and the twisted movie ends here. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to our channel. I'll be back with another interesting movie recap. Until then, take care.